welcome to Seen Through Glass, welcome back to Cape Town, and welcome to another Driveway Goals episode. Today, I'm off to meet up with Porsche Girl Cape Town. Michelle, as her name suggests on Instagram, is a female Porsche collector, and the cave cavern garage that she has built is goals around the world, so let's go check it out. My name is Michelle Pembley. I have a car problem, section addiction, and uh, I'll take you through some of my babies. This is actually a 944 Turbo, but it's called the Fire Chicken, because a friend of mine is a car journalist, and when I put the Dragon on, he walked in here and said, oh, it's a Fire Chicken. So it's forever spoilt. There's no such thing as a Dragon, it's a Fire Chicken. Love the car, it goes like a rocket. This was my first Porsche ever bought. This is the 911T, 1970. Very classic, very beautiful, um, in a seriously great condition. And I've earned this one for going on six years now. And um, interior is beautiful, stunning, 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 stunning. This was the bucket list car that I had to have. I wanted to start with this, but then my husband said, he can't imagine spending that amount of money on a, on a car that is like half the size of a Range Rover. He just bought himself a Range Rover. And the one that I wanted to get in Joburg um, was the equivalent of a big Range Rover. And you just said, I can't see the value in this car. So I'm afraid I'm not going to buy it. Uh, five years down the lane, uh, my husband is saying I should have bought that car. Anyway, he doesn't argue with me anymore, Sam. He just says, right, uh, what are we doing here now? And I, the biggest compliment that I've ever got is that he reckons I'm the best investment he ever made. <laughs> This is my little 911T. This is a very interesting story. Um, I had two dear friends who, the one is no longer with us, he's driving Porsches up in heaven, a gentleman called Nick, and another friend who went to Ireland, John Mallipard, and they both had 912s, and that's how I fell in love with the 912. And when John went to Ireland, I actually wanted to keep the car here, so that's why I've got this one. And in time to come, I'll restore her back to original, because the value of 912s are also going up quite dramatically. Oh, I mean, this is my... This is a very cute car. This is not a real one, okay? <laughs> this is my replica. But the interesting thing about my replica, it's made me more money than any of these cars put together because they use this one for film shoots and they shot the Grand Prix original catalogue using this particular car. And she's lovely. I put my 70th anniversary sticker on her and uh, she's fun. 1600 little Volkswagen engine goes beautifully. Right, the piece de resistance in my entire collection is Ferdinand. Ferdinand is a 1958 one cylinder diesel tractor. Top speed 19.2 kilometers an hour. And the interesting thing about her is that she's a 14 brake horsepower tractor and dearly beloved by all Porsche collectors. And I found this one in Northern Ireland. Looked for her for four years. Um, she's been restored to basically museum specification. And I actually drive her. The guys will tell you. She's been in the track in Kalani. I'm part of the Tractor Association of South Africa. And uh, we're going to write a book with a man called Klaus Muller, who wrote this book called Ferdinand the Little Red Tractor. And we're going to call it Ferdinand Comes to Africa. So you'll see some giraffes and lions and things like that. <laughs> This actually came from Crosley and Webb at the time. This is a Type 34 Carmen Gear. It's a Wolfsburg model, and it was the last body designed by Carmen Gear before Porsche bought the factory to produce the 911 and 356 bodies. So it's a very interesting car. I rally it, um, it's beautiful. It has the most amazing emblem. If you come to the back, you'll see it has the Wolfsburg emblem. So it's got a serious um, lineage and it has some great provenance. Um, then another 944 for my race car, it's a 944 Turbo. Um, beautiful car, goes very nicely. Now this car has got a very interesting history. It's a 356 Super 90, 1962. Um, I acquired this car from an elderly gentleman in Brackpan in South Africa. 
and it has an incredible provenance. I still have the original medicine kit, the original bowl box. If I show you the front, it has the original belt and also the cover that goes over the tank, which is apparently quite unusual because they obviously got broken and destroyed over time. So this car for me is it's very special. I wanted one of these for a long time as well. Porsche Classic restored it and um, yeah, I drive her a lot, I must say. She's great. Oh, my favourite of all my cars. If you ask me which one I'd like to take out and which one gives me the most pleasure, it's this 950 Turbo, full speed box. Goes like a rocket. <laughs> and uh, it's a stunning baby car. I really do like this one. Also came from one of the Porsche collectors in Cape Town. He was the Porsche Club president. And um, so it's got great history. It's got a full service history. Um, he's kept it in good. And she's totally original. I haven't touched her and I won't. Originality for me is, is quite a lot when it comes to that particular one. This is everyone's favorite. I don't actually know why. It's got something to do with the movie, hasn't it? Um, the Bad Boys. This is the Bad Boys one. 993 Twin Turbo, left-hand drive, mint condition. Also came via, via, via. Chased this one for four years. Was told that I wouldn't get it. And eventually the owner phoned me and said, right, I'm ready to let go. And I wanted to go to a collector. I don't want it to leave the country. So here she stands. Arena Red, which was the launch colour. And um, yeah, a beautiful car. I must say, if I stand in front of them, I normally take that one out. For some other reason, that 930 Turbo talks to me. Then this is a very special car. A um, 997 GD3 RS. <laughs> well, it's the one that Walter Roll said is the best RS he's ever driven. So I'll never, ever, ever offload this one. This came by a friend of mine who raced. Um, and I got the phone call to say, the car's going to be offloaded, are you interested? And it took me a half an hour to convince my husband to take the money out of our mortgage. <laughs> but here she stands in all her glory. I do love her. And then interestingly enough, the only new Porsche I ever bought was the GT4. And that's the last one to roll off the production line. Um, yeah, it was, you know, in South Africa we only got so many of them. and. I was just very lucky um, I got that one. And what I have done a little bit is I've outlawed her. We don't tell Porsche that, but we outlawed her. We put Vorstein extensions on for the wing, and uh, we managed to get a little outlaw sticker on the back. And I must say, it's a great car to drive. My husband likes this one. He doesn't enjoy that. He says the seats are too tight. And then the only Tiptronic I have is this 964 which I wanted to sell at some point, but now I've decided to keep it because 964s are the base model for so many incredible cars. And maybe in time to come, I'll do my own Magnus Walker, Outlaw, Stroke, Archive, <laughs> Web and Sun <laughs> moment. Um, there's two more in the front, if you want to go to that and have a quick look. This is also a 964. 39 is my race number, which is why there's 34 on it. Um, also a one owner car, came from Johannesburg, it's actually an American spec which is apparently meant to be a detuned engine but we've flipped it back to where they should be and uh, it's also one of those cars I'll never offload, it's one of those sort of special ones, it has a, a story, it has a history, the guy who sold it to me, his children were leaving South Africa to go to New Zealand and he loved the car, he actually went over with three friends to go and purchase one of them bought a 993, one bought a 930, and he bought the 964. And he's the only one who kept and retained his car. And when his kids left, he wanted to help them get started and set up. And he heard about me and made the call and said, look, I don't want the car to leave. I don't want them to strip her or do something with her. So that's how I managed to get my hands onto this one. Um, this is a Targa. I've got a few Targas. I've got one that's being fixed at the moment. Um, this is a beautiful car. This came from a place called Namibia and it has a very strong German origin and German vibe to it. And this car came from Namibia, so there is no rust. I mean, it is beautiful. It's still got the Harlequin interior um, and she's completely original. Nothing has been done to this car. And uh, she was a birthday present a couple of years ago.
my god. I mean, <laughs> downstairs, blown my mind. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, which I don't know if my viewers would have picked up on, you've actually got a little tattoo, I think, on your forearm. Oh, I do have a little <laughs> tattoo. Uh, very well noticed, Sam. Um, it's a 356 Super 90, 1962, and I wanted it so desperately, and at the age of 54 I decided, you know what, I'd rather ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> but it proves... Uh, Again, my sort of theory that Porsche is a cult. It is a cult. It's an obsession, right? It's so bad right now that when people talk to my husband about my craziness, he says, just look at the tattoo. The wheels have come off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where did it begin? Because that's I think that I find that more interesting. What was your first Porsche? Where did you even get the idea to buy one? I had the privilege of driving a 73 RS Lightweight, a real one. A friend of mine who's an architect from Turkey, guy called Ali Kamali, let me drive his car to Somerset West. And when I got out of that car, I just thought, Sam, why am I messing with V8s? <laughs> why are you with anything else? Drives like a dog. Um, and that's where it started. And then I kind of like, I'm, as you can see, I'm quite passionate and I love history and I love stories. So I started doing the whole push research thing and I wanted an S. I thought, you know what, I'll start with an S. And that's how it all came about, and it was a slippery slope. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I'm experiencing myself. I'm only on my second Porsche, but I get it. And there's some reason you just sort of want all of them at some point. Oh, can I tell you a secret? Please. That's why I wanted the tractor because I felt so. After reading Porsche's story and reading about about Butzi and about Ferdi and about how they kind of got into this thing, I, I thought, you know what? I'll stop with the tractor. I actually want a tractor. To be used to track it down. And I have a wish list on the fridge, a 959 Comfort okay. and a GDT, a, a Carrera GT, which okay. is I think kind of like where I'd like to go. And right now, I was lucky because I got into Porsche before the market went crazy. Oh, and I kind of think I bought correctly. I kind of had an idea. I wanted a 930 Turbo, 993 Twin Turbo seemed like a good buy. The 997 really fell into my lap, I must say. Thank you so much for, for having me, for showing me. I mean, we haven't captured even half of what's going on here. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, if people want to follow you, on, so you're on Instagram, right? Porsche Girl CT. Porsche Girl CT, a, a must check out, a must follow. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Sam. It was lovely to meet you. Really nice to meet you, absolutely. This is a 1996 E-Class 7.3 litre Bravo. Wow! This was for many years the fastest normally aspirated sedan in the world. Oh, and that, is that the Zonda engine? Is that the engine no, that went into the... No, no, no. no? This, this, this motor is the 